if we are developing a pattern with our Pogon save, Season 4 is going to end like Season 2, which was a second place. We won the league in Season 1, second in Season 2. We won the league again in Season 3. Season 4, I'd love to win it for a third time, but I feel like it's probably not going to happen. And that's just based on patterns, which I'm fully aware is a stupid thing to base things on. But anyway, we're here for Season 4 of our Youth Academy Challenge. And because it is Season 4, it means we are locking in four starred players who have come through our youth intakes in the previous three seasons. The transfer window has opened in Season 4, but as of yet, we have not done any business. But we did actually do some business in, I'm going to say, February last season. And I just didn't tell you about it. In the January transfer window, we picked up a Malawian international with 11 caps to his name, and that is Mike Zonda. He was signed from Bullets FC. He cost £1.6,000, which is absolute peanuts, isn't it? Um, I found him by going to the Malawi national side. Um, he was the only one in there, so I went, let's have a look. He's quite good. We brought him in. So yeah, Mike Zonda, he's now a Pogon player. I'm not sure whether he's going to play a huge amount. He did play three times last season, in fact, and a few times for the B team or the second team. Mike Zonder's in. Four players have also left the club on free transfers after their contract expired, and I don't think any of them are really much use. I mean, he's not bad, is he? He's actually played a lot of football for us. Some of the other players, not so much. So, for Fornalik, Fon didn't play a huge amount of time. This guy played lots for the under-21s or whatever they are, and same with this guy here. So, yeah, a few more players have been released on free transfers. We do have a massive £23 million to spend, and I think we might need to buy ourselves a goalkeeper. Because our number one goalkeeper for the past few seasons is now 35 years of age and is leaving the club to sign for Rijeka. Which means we're either playing this man, who I don't think is very good. He's already played 14 first-team appearances, and I don't think he's good enough to play them. Or the Spanish and Filipino goalkeeper from Dam, Salguero, who also I don't think is good enough. So we might need to bring in our goalkeeper. And I said at the start of this save that we are allowed to buy players over 21 if they are goalkeepers. That is the only position. So we might be going a little bit older than 21 for this. I'm not thinking massively old. Maybe up to sort of 28, not buying a 35-year-old. So, from a competition's perspective, obviously, because we won the Extra Classer, we are in the Champions League. We do have to go through a couple of qualifying rounds to get there, but that should be easy enough. We are in the Polish FA Cup, and we're in the Polish Super Cup against the team that we beat in the Polish FA Cup final, I believe. Um, if I scroll down, yeah, we beat them 7-3. So, I imagine we should be able to beat these guys. I did just see that they did get promoted to the Extra Classer, so fair enough. Right, let's jump forward then to the start of September. The transfer window will close. Some business will definitely be taking place because like I said we need a new goalkeeper so let's see what we've done we've brought in eight million pounds into the club through selling players which is not good by the way and we've spent about two hundred thousand pounds on a new goalkeeper so Stipika has left he has gone to Rijeka as we know Shraminski has also left he's gone to another team in Pogon by the looks of it Holowinski has signed for Piast and been dropped down to their second team and Kasper Golbuski, might be his name, probably not, has signed for Craiovia. All of those four players, by the way, have gone on free transfers. We've also got three players leaving on loan deals. We've got this young central midfielder. Robert Ferrario, who should be playing first team football for us, but basically isn't going to get there because of locking in players on the left wing. He's gone on loan to Radomiak. And Xablinski, might be his name, has gone on loan to the team that we played in the Polish Super Cup final. We have unfortunately sold Ricard Mora. He's gone to Atletico Madrid, but has been loaned back for the season. He's gone for £3 million. I'm pretty sure there's a hefty sell on maybe even 50% in this one. And Gregor's Baniak has also left the club. He has gone over to Napoli for £5 million. Once again, there was a big sell on in there and we've loaned him back. And our new number one goalkeeper is Cesare Mista, might be his name. He is signed from Legia, formerly actually of Rio Ave in Portugal. I assume that's a loan deal. Yeah, it was a loan deal. So we brought in ourselves a young Polish goalkeeper. He's cost just under £200,000. Still 24. I think this is a sensible bit of business. We've got, what, six seasons, seven seasons left to play. He might be our number one goalkeeper until the end of this simulation. Ten seasons, remember, is what we're going to do, unless we get somebody in who's really, really good from our youth intakes, which I don't think we're going to do because goalkeepers are quite hard to get. Other things that are worth mentioning. So, first of all, we have spoke to the board and they are buying the stadium and they are planning to expand the stadium as well. So that is two very good bits of news. They have also agreed to improve our training facilities. So once again, also very, very useful. And our junior coaching budget has also been increased, which I believe now might be max or very close to being the maximum amount. So if you go facilities, we've got exceptional youth recruitment, excellent academy coaching. So this is obviously very, very good. We've got good training facilities. That's an easy word to say and great youth facilities. So those are getting up there as well. And like I said, we are buying the stadium 
and then hopefully expanding it as well. So because it is season four, we have to lock in four players. And I've said to myself, which I don't know whether I'm going to stick to this rule, by the way, because we've loaned Baniak back in, he doesn't count because he's not our player anymore. So we've kind of, yes, he's still technically come through our youth system, but we've sold him. He's gone, on, gone out and come back on loan. He's not really ours anymore. So we are locking in four players. And you can see we've still got Goralski still out the club. He'll be playing in that attacking midfield role. Very, very good footballer, if you ask me. Christoph Mutcher will be playing on that left-hand side, which is the reason why we loaned out Ferrero. I think that's his name, because basically Mutcher was just going to play there every game and the Spanish guy was going to get annoyed. Up front, being locked into the squad for his first season is Sebastian Wilk. He has played a few games previously, I think three matches, maybe even two matches in last season. He is going to be our number one striker. This is a big risk because if we don't score goals, we don't win games. And if we don't win games, we don't win the league. We've obviously had Luka Zavic has been our number one striker for a few seasons. He's been very good, but we're going to take a risk and go for Sebastian Wilk. And the other risk that we are going to go for is Mateusz Wolski, who is a 17-year-old now central defender. He's actually played a fair amount of times in the last couple of seasons. He's going to be locked in as our centre-back. He played 22 times last season, and most of them were off the bench, but he did start a few matches as well. So this one, I think, is a good idea. The problem is, we've got far too many players who are really good as attacking players. So we've got Kostrabala, who is a very good attacking player. We've got uh, Golanski, who's a very good attacking player. When we look at our defenders... Ones with stars on, we've got Wolski and Wisniewski. And yeah, that's it. And Wisniewski's not very good. Right backs, we've got Kostrabala. I don't think should be a right back. Yes, we've got Baniak as our left back, but he's not really our player anymore. Defence midfielders, we don't really have anyone here either. We've got Golowski and Wisniewski who can play in those roles, which again, they're not good enough to do it. Maybe, I mean, we're not going to do this, but maybe we can play Wisniewski in one of those positions, but he's not very good. So this is what we're locking in for the season. And I'm genuinely worried that we might finish outside maybe the top six, which could be a problem because if we get sacked, I don't think the board are going to be happy with us. I think we're going to finish fifth. That's my guess. My guess is fifth. I'm hoping we finish higher. Obviously, you can see we have started the season and we're not doing amazingly well. We have lost twice. Who did we lose against? We have lost against Jagalionia and Rakow. Jagalionia are ahead of us. Rakow are just below us. Okay. But we have also won five matches beating Rook Piast, Zaglebe, Brookbed, Tremelica. Why am I trying to say these names? And Radomiak as well. So we've beaten lots of teams down the wrong end of the table. 15 points on the board after seven games. It's not awful. We do need to kind of try and keep up with the leaders. But I am genuinely concerned that Wilk is not going to do the business. That's, the, that's my big concern. Is Sebastian Wilk might be our downfall this season. And with that in mind, let's go on holiday then until the 1st of April when our youth intake has come through. We'll take a look to see who is the new players in the squad. And before we jump too much further, we have been knocked out of the Champions League. Unfortunately, we lose 8-5 on aggregate, a 6-3 defeat as well. What is going on? Some of our like Champions League and European fixtures are just an absolute mess. It means we are in the Europa League, but we're actually not one of the lowest seeds anymore. It means... We're going to play one of these teams down this end. So who, who even MTA? They're from Israel. Maccabi Tel Aviv. Fair enough. I didn't even know. Why would they be short onto that? Anyway, so we've got some teams down here. I feel like we should be able to beat. And arguably some of the teams in the middle we should be able to beat. I've got high hopes for a half-decent Europa League run. Although we are playing World Cup front, who I don't think is going to score enough goals for us. Right, with that in mind, let's jump forward then to the 1st of April where we get our new youth intake. Are we going to have another excellent intake or is this going to be the first time around where we don't have a very good one? So for season four, it is only a good youth intake, which still isn't particularly bad. Four star intake. We've got five players that I have earmarked and one of them is a goalkeeper. Everyone else is a winger or an attacking footballer, which is not good. We need defensive midfielders. We need centre backs. We need full backs. That's what we're missing. So let's take a look at the bottom end. Ernest Kolodziai might be his name. It is a 15 year old currently left winger. I think he looks quite good. I don't know why. He just does, does look quite good. Also, Kolodziai is a good name, right? In goal, we have Mikhail Rydzak, who doesn't look very good at the moment. He's 6'3 at 15 years of age. Obviously, plenty of time to develop. He might become our goalkeeper just because we have to play him in goal. I don't know. We'll see how things go. Moving into the elite talents, we have Mikhail Radziwix, might be his name who is 15, a right wing attacking midfielder, maybe a striker as well if we need him to play there. I'm not, I mean, he's all right. It just doesn't have, the mental numbers aren't there, are they? Low determination, four determination is not ideal. 
team a work rate of five. I mean, this one, not convinced. He might have the potential, apparently, according to my coaches, but I'm not convinced. Moving even further up the pitch to our striker, we have Jakub Ratowski, who I'm, I quite like him. Ratowski looks pretty good. He's got some very good mental numbers. Physically looks okay. Technically doesn't look too bad either with his 12 finishing 11 dribbling. He is only 15 and he's got another, what, 10, 8 months? 8 months before he actually turns 16. So he's got a long, long way to grow. I, I quite like... I quite like Ratowski. If Wilk doesn't do much better this season, Ratowski might be our number one striker next year. And finally, we have Piotr Maslanka, who is a left winger. Well, he needs to be trained up to be a left winger. Or maybe a left back. He's got five tackling. He's not a left back. I mean, he's all right. He's got decent physicals. Mentally, not amazing. His forward determination is not great, but the work rate of 14 might help out. Technically, not awful. As it, When it comes to being a winger, he's not awful. He's not very good at lots of other things like marking, heading, finishing. Um, he needs he needs a lot of work. So that is our intake for season four, and I'm not convinced it's very good. Looking at the results then, obviously we are quite a way through the season. In the Europa League, we've been knocked out in the playoff round after losing 10-6 against St. Gallen. I don't know what happens in Europe. We just we score lots and lots of goals, but also concede stupid amounts of goals as well. It does mean we got through the league phase. Four wins with a 3-0 against Astana, 3-0 against Hajduk. 3-2 against Panathinaikos and a 3-0 against Molder. So when we won, we scored three goals. And then the defeats, we conceded three goals. I mean, that would explain why our goal difference is zero, because we score lots, but we also concede lots, which we know anyway. In the extra classer, we are fifth. We are a long, long way behind Rakal, who are top of the table as well. We've only drawn once. We've lost nine, so that is, what, five more defeats? Not five more, seven more defeats since the start of the season, which is quite a lot of defeats. All of them seem to be away, bar two of them. Rakow have done the double against us as well. When we win, we win comfortably. An 8-1 win there against the team that would be in the Super Cup final. I'm If we can finish in the top five, at least we should get Europe. That needs to be our objective. I feel like the problem here might be Wilk. Yeah, I think, I think it's Wilk. I'm sticking with it. This is my rule, that if we pick the team at the start of the season, we are stick with it until the end of the season. But Sebastian Wilk has got nine goals, five of them in 16 league appearances. He did get a fairly sizable injury, which might have helped us out, to be honest. When you think our top goal scorer has started 15 games, I'm assuming he's probably played the majority of the ones when we've had injuries. Oh, he plays on the right, doesn't he? Lukas Zahovic has probably come in for Wilk for these ones and scored one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's, if Wilk's the problem, Wilk is definitely the problem, isn't he? But we're going to stick with it for now. We are going to jump forward then to the end of the season to see how well we've got on and hopefully we can finish in the top five if we can if we can basically get european football for next season that's always an improvement and that's always good to see somehow we have turned things around and finished second place and qualified for the champions league how have we done that also how have we qualified for the champions league so two teams okay we've gone up basically in the coefficients which means two teams get in the champions league that's very very good what have we done? How have we turned this around? We've literally not lost a game since the 1st of April. We've drawn twice and then obviously won everything else. So actually, it's not even the 1st of April. We haven't lost a league game since the 2nd or the 5th of February, sorry. So we've actually done ridiculously well. And Wilk has played well. He's still playing games, scoring some more goals. Not a lot, apparently. He's got one, two, three, four more goals since the last time we checked in by the looks of it. Which is not a huge amount of goals, is it? But he's getting better. He's definitely getting better. Well, that is kind of confusing to me. But the fact that we finished second is very, very helpful because Champions League football helps us out from a financial perspective. A financial perspective, by the way, that means we have now brought our stadium. It is our own stadium now. We own it. We can do what we want to it. And what we are doing is we're expanding it by 5,290 seats, which is what, going to put us on to about 25,000 seats, which that's fine, that's a decent sized stadium. Well, let's take a look at the squad then. First of all, we'll take a look at the four players that we have locked in. Obviously, Sebastian Wilk has been the focus of my attention for most of this video. He's, he's getting better as a footballer, but he's not really scoring the goals. An XG of 10, but scoring 13. When you think we were scoring maybe like 30 goals from one striker in the last few seasons, Wilk getting 13 is not enough. He might Basically, this might be his first and only season playing for us. Goralski next up. It looks like he's had a fairly bad injury. Damaged knee cartilage, but he's obviously been playing in that attacker midfield role. 13 goals, 17 assists. Did he? He's literally just picked up. Okay, he's just missed the final four games of the season. That's not too bad then at all. Goralski is good. 
and I'm still not quite sure how we've still kept hold of him. He's got a two-year contract. We might need to give him a new one sooner rather than later because basically if he gets into his final year, chances are somebody's just going to steal him from us. Christoph Mutcher also playing, I think this is now third season, potentially maybe second season, just locked in. We can actually have a look, can't we? Yeah, second season locked in. Not as good as last year, but still managing to get 13 goals, 9 assists. Still pretty decent. He's wanted by Juve, Lec and FC Porto. Mutcher might be off. That's not good. He's not even worth a lot, is he? He's not even worth a lot of money. I feel like if Mutcher goes, we'll do the same thing that we did with Baniak and basically bring him back on loan for another season. Speaking of Baniak, I know he's technically not our player anymore. Um, He's done all right. Seven assists, two goals from left back. It's not amazing, to be honest, but he's a very good footballer. The final player to take a look at then is Mateusz Wolski, who's now 18 years of age. He's played 29 league appearances, 45 in all competitions. He's done all right. He's turning into... Mentally, he's actually very good, I think. I think there's some good numbers and very good places. 15 leadership. We might have a future club captain on our hands there. Okay, I mean, I'm not sure why you'd do that, but we might end up doing that. He t technically, 11, 11 and 13 for the key things for a no-nonsense centre-back. We actually play a ball player, which he's not awful at that either with 11 first touch, 10 passing. So he's he's okay. I, I quite like Wolski. I don't know why. I don't think he's amazing, but there's something about Wolski that I'm enjoying. I did have some other starred players in the first team squad. Galanski is one of them. He actually started twice in the league, 16 times off the bench. We had nothing to do with this, so he would have come on a lot for Vahan, I assume. He's done all right. Considering we didn't lock him in, he's done all right. But the one who's played a lot of football is Kostrabala. And I don't know why. He started 16, 13 off the bench. What position have you been playing? Winger and right back. Okay, you've been playing all over the place. You got three assists in your last two games. I mean, technically, yes, you can play there, mate, but I feel like we shouldn't, should we? Eight tackling's not bad. Eight tackling is certainly not bad. Do we retrain Kostrabala to be a left, a right back? Actually, I feel like we shouldn't do it. Two other players worth calling out from goals, that is, Lukas Zahavic being the first one. Eight starts, ten off the bench in the league, only four league goals, but 13 in all competitions. I feel like not playing Zahavic might have been our downfall for this season. But luckily for us, I think Vahan saved the day. Playing as our right winger predominantly with 21 starts and 13 league goals. 20 goals in all competitions. 7 assists as well. Vahan is kind of one of those players that he's just really useful to have. Problem is, he's got a 2 year contract and I don't think I want to extend it. Not because I don't think he's good enough. But I feel like we are going to replace him sooner rather than later. And rather than giving him a contract and him just trying to basically not playing and getting annoyed, we might just get rid of him. Maybe we sell him. It's, he's probably not worth enough money to sell. From an assist perspective, obviously, fullbacks seem to get a lot of assists. Leo Borges is one of them getting 10 assists. I imagine you and Banyak, you played as a centre-back quite a lot of the time. When you played left-back is probably where you got your assist. Yeah, so Borges and Banyak would have probably been rotating slightly. He's ridiculous, by the way. Did I just... I just ignored the fact that Leo Borges is amazing. He's four and a half star current ability. He's wanted by a couple of teams in Saudi Arabia. He's very good. He's probably leaving in the summer, isn't he? And the other player is going to be Walkweist, who's obviously going to be our right back, predominantly maybe a centre back as well. Once again, another player who's actually really, really good. He's got 16 assists in all competitions, three goals as well. And the last thing to take a look at then, the highest average rating is Borges who I can't remember what he got. I just saw it then. It was a 7.21. And then we've got Valkovist is our second best. And then Baniak in third place as well. Joel Gamboa just does the job, doesn't he? He's a really good player. He just does the job. Nothing special, nothing spectacular. Just does a really good bit of work for us. So that is it for season four. Season five will be the last time we have to lock in a specific number of players. As in season five is the most players we will be locking in to so season six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 will be a maximum of five players or a minimum, sorry, of five players being locked into our starting 11. We've obviously got some decent players to look at, but we are losing Baniak. I'm worried that we're going to lose some of these other players as well. Who was it? Uh, it's not Wilk. It's, it's Mutcher. Mutcher's the one that I'm worried we might end up losing him because obviously big teams want Mutcher. So next season, we might need to find two more players to come into our starting 11. In fact, we will because Sebastian Wilk is not going to be starting next year. I need to find somebody else to play instead. Just having a quick look to see if we've got anyone in our second team with stars on their name. We've got Kmisic. Mate, do we do we do this one? Do we go for Jan? Jan might be the man to do the job. 
Senko, I feel like Senko might need to get called up purely because of his position, which is not ideal. Same with Saigan, might need to get called up because of his position. Rydzak as well, because he's a goalkeeper, I might need to call him up to the first team. Anyway, that is going to do it for Season 4. Catch me next time for Season 5.